Some of you may have seen Marquez Brownlee's video from a few months back about how he hasn't paid for electricity in a year because of his Tesla solar roof. But this got me wondering, why am I still not seeing a lot of Tesla solar roofs all around? I first hit on this issue a few years ago in a video, and since then I've only seen one solar roof in my old neighborhood in Massachusetts. That's compared to dozens and dozens of homes with solar panels. I've also been asked a lot as to why I didn't get a solar roof on my brand new house. Well, I thought it might be interesting to compare my house to another house from here in New England that does have a solar roof. A friend of the channel, Paul Barron, invited me out to his house to check out his setup. Now, both his system and my system were installed last year, so I thought it'd be really interesting to compare the two, the reasons why we did what we did, the costs, and our initial thoughts. By the end, maybe we'll be able to figure out an answer to my question, why aren't we seeing more solar shingle roofs? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogni, but more on that later. In this corner, we have Matt, the solar fanatic feral, with his brand new net zero energy home. At least he hopes it achieves net zero energy. In the other corner, we have Paul Tinker Tri Brarin, tinkering his way to solar dominance with a renovated net zero energy home. At least he hopes it achieves net zero energy. <coughs> Whoa, sorry. I'm not sure what just happened there. Anyway, I'd like to introduce you to Paul Brarin from TinkerTry.com. He had his 27.6 kilowatt Tesla solar roof installed in June of 2023, along with four Tesla Powerwalls, three Tesla inverters, one Tesla backup gateway, and one span panel. Now on my home, I have a 17.2 kilowatt solar panel array made up of 43 REC400 solar panels, which are using Enphase microinverters, two span panels, and eventually four Enphase IQ5P batteries. And I say eventually because they're still not installed yet. I'm still caught up in permitting hell, but I'll get to that later. So one of the big questions for me is why we did what we did. Why did Paul go with the Tesla solar roof? And why did I, well, not do it? Our house faces west, southwest. So if I went with this roof, our roof, which has a lot of rectangular surfaces and a lot of triangular surfaces, is the way the pitch is and the kind of the complicated roof line, putting a bunch of rectangles on there was only to get us about 60% coverage when we went to, with other quotes. This is a big one. Paul's roof line is a little tricky because of all the angles, which would make it harder to get a standard large rectangle to fit well in the areas that he'd need to install them in. He might end up with two or three panels in one triangular area, four in the next, and so on. With a Tesla solar roof, Paul was able to squirrel away 384 solar shingles in more areas of the roof. However, there is something important to call out about that. Tesla hasn't revealed the exact solar panel efficiency of their tiles, so it's estimated that it might be between 14 and 18 percent, compared to a typical panel, which is around 22 to 23 percent. And on that point, Paul wasn't too concerned. I know they're a little less efficient, all right? So I'm aware that 60 percent coverage for a rectangle would be roughly equivalent to like 80 percent. Well, I think I was able to go to 83 percent of the roof coverage, but also cosmetically look like looking better, right? right? For me personally, not everyone cares about that stuff, but when your road, when your house is facing the way the sun is going to be much of the time in the summer, and it's a large roof facing the road, yeah, the cosmetics go down a bit, whereas lots of houses in my neighborhood have solar just in the back, especially if the back of their house is facing south. So it really depends on which way your house aims. Another reason that Paul went with Tesla over something like I got? So you put all that together, large roof in a one-story house, integration with EV charging, those were all appealing where going with Tesla, specifically the solar roof, that tipped the balance towards that because Laos also needed a new roof. So it did need new roofing anyway. So why not go with a Tesla solar roof? Why didn't I go in that direction? Before talking about that, there's another issue that we need to talk about, and that's protecting your online privacy with today's sponsor, Incogni. I've mentioned this before, but I signed up for a newsletter from a small online retailer, and after I did, I saw a major increase in the number of promotional emails I was receiving from companies I've never heard of. Now that happened because that company sold my information to a data broker. Sometimes they sell your info to some pretty shady people, or they can fall victim to data breaches that leak your information online to scammers. Now, I'm sure you've experienced it too, and Cogni can help you with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and just then sat back and relaxed. You'll see updates in your account for which data brokers they've sent legal requests to and which ones have complied. It couldn't be easier. I've been letting Incogni stay on top of this for me for quite a while now, and I'm really happy with the results. If you want to take back some of the control around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Use code UNDECIDED at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. 
Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. So why not go with the Tesla Solar Roof? Well, I almost did. I love the concept of solar shingle products like the Tesla Solar Roof or the GAF Timberline Solar Shingle, but for me, it came down to cost and the questions I had around the product lifespan, and I'm not talking about in the way you might think. The Solar Roof is like a premium roofing product, comparable to a metal roof, slate, or clay. Something like a metal roof costs more than asphalt, but will last you a lifetime. Tesla Solar Roof shingles are in the same ballpark with the other premium options for looks and durability. That high premium price is doing double duty for Tesla. It's a great looking, high-end roof, and it's solar. However, my big concern was the product lifespan. And I'm not talking about the tiles themselves not lasting. I'm talking about how quickly Tesla will iterate this version of the product. How long will they keep manufacturing and supporting older versions of the solar shingle into the future for early customers who need replacement shingles down the road? Now, these solar shingle products, including Tesla's competitors in the space, are so new, I wasn't willing to be an early adopter on this. I'm an early adopter on most technology, but not this time. I liked the idea of a lifelong metal roof, which is easily fixable at any point down the line from a variety of manufacturers. Pair that with standard solar panels, which again are just that, standard. If my specific solar panel is no longer made and I need to replace one, it's no big deal. Metal roofs and solar panels are like peanut butter and chocolate. The way the solar panels are installed on the standing seam with clamps makes them easy to attach and remove, all without drilling through the roof itself. So yes, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as Paul's roof, which is absolutely beautiful, but my wife and I don't mind the look of solar panels at all. In fact, I kind of like the look of them. The other issue I wasn't willing to gamble with was timing and coordination issues. Tesla isn't exactly known for its stellar customer service experience. It can be very hit or miss. Add that to the fact that I was worried about getting the roof installed in a timely manner when the house was ready for it. I've heard countless stories about long delays in getting solar roofs installed. If you're replacing an existing roof that's still technically working, that's frustrating, but it's not a deal breaker. But if you have a house with no roof, like I did, it's a bit more urgent to get that roof on quickly. Now, I avoided that potential issue using a standard roofing product and adding solar on later. In Paul's case, he put down an initial deposit for a solar roof in June of 2022. He closed on his new house in September of 2022, and then it was installed in June of 2023. Even if you take out the initial deposit date, you're still talking about nine months between moving in and final installation. And speaking of installation experiences, what was Paul's like? Well, overall, it sounded pretty good. It seems Tesla was pretty responsive during the process, but there still were some hiccups along the way. Yeah, there were some handoffs that were maybe less than smooth. And we ended up with like five different electricians in that last week or so. Mm -hmm. Made it a little tricky for them to communicate with each other. And there were some mistakes actually in cabling. But they owned their mistakes. Cabling was too thin. Two people came back a month or two later when I was having charge and solar issues and communication errors on the app. They looked at it. They're like, yeah, we need to put a thicker gauge in for the communication wires because of the distance in your house from your garage to the other side. We should have gone a little thicker. I appreciate that. I said, thank you for admitting what's wrong mm -hmm. and offering how quickly you're going to fix it within two days. Another issue that came up was that one of the two gateways stopped working and wasn't logging data. The solar panel system was working fine, but you couldn't see any data in the app. Annoying? Yes. Deal breaker? Absolutely not. Tesla replaced the gateway and everything is working great again. In my case, I've actually detailed some of the issues I had in my previous video on my solar panel system, but the short story is that I had difficulty coordinating with my solar installer in a timely fashion to make sure that my house's general contractor could pre-run conduits and cabling for the solar team. I wanted to try to limit the amount of conduit runs on the surface of the roof as much as I could and reduce intrusion points into the house. In the end, it all worked out, but it was a little frustrating during the process. The other big thing is permitting. Getting approvals from your town and utility to interconnect your solar to the grid can be slow, to say the least. Prime example is that I'm still waiting for my battery system to get installed because of some very, very slow permitting approvals. I know Paul has had the pleasure of enjoying some of these issues too. In both our cases, I think our recommendation to everyone would be to have some patience. Now, I know the big question that most of you are probably asking right now, but how much did it cost? This is where it gets a little tricky and interesting. Paul's Tesla solar roof and four power walls cost $153,000, not including the incentives. I'll give you a second to pick yourself up off the floor. It's pricey, but let's break that down. The solar roof by itself cost $110,000. The four power walls cost about $32,000. And there was another $11,000 that was necessary for some re-roofing. 
Now let's compare that to what I paid, or will have paid by the time the batteries are installed. My entire system will have cost $88,000. Of that, $55,000 is for solar and $33,000 is for batteries. However, that does not include the cost of my roof. Now, what I can tell you is that my roof did not cost $65,000, which is the price difference between our two systems. My roof was somewhere between forty dollars and $50,000, which means the total system cost with the roof is probably about fifteen dollars to $20,000 less. Now, to try to equalize that, you could say that he paid about $4 per watt, while I paid about $3.22 per watt. Now, as I mentioned before, it's a metal roof. An asphalt roof would have cost half as much, but wouldn't last nearly as long. Now, if I had an asphalt roof, there would be no contest between our total costs. My entire setup would have come out way ahead. However, this is what I liked about comparing our two homes. It's a premium roof compared to a premium roof, so it's more apples to apples. Now, granted, Paul's solar panel array is much larger than mine at 27.6 kilowatts versus my 17.2 kilowatts, and he's also got more battery storage, twice the storage capacity of my system, which means that accounts for some of the additional cost, but not all of it. If you double the size of the solar panel system you're considering, it doesn't double the price. The cost per watt often diminishes a little bit as you scale up. Tossing a few extra solar panels onto your array doesn't dramatically jack up the cost. Another factor to consider is the federal solar tax credit of 30%. Paul is essentially getting 30% off his roof, which I'm not. After the tax credit, it works out to a cost of about $107,000 for Paul's solar, batteries, and roof. If you lump the cost of my roof into my setup, it works out to about $107,000. So it's looking pretty good for Paul. However, even if I didn't get solar, I still would have wanted a metal roof for durability and longevity, so for me, I don't look at the cost of my roof as part of the equation. Now, none of this is taking into account the energy savings that we'll see over time or the net metering benefits. That could be a video on its own because it's very complicated. And on that note, net metering rates are highly variable based on where you live. Local governments are changing these rules as we speak, like they did in California not too long ago. Now, on a recent episode of my Still To Be Determined podcast, I spoke to Spencer Fields from Energy Sage about how net metering and these changes are impacting solar adoption. If you want to get grandfathered into existing net metering rates in your area before they possibly change, you might not want to wait. I'll have links to that interview and to my Energy Sage portal down below. Now, at the end of the day, both of our setups were costly, but they were designed to fit our specific needs. Paul wanted aesthetics, the dual layered system with tight membrane on his roof for water tightness, and an all-in-one solution for electricity, storage, and charging his car. They have two electric vehicles and an air source HVAC heat pump to cover, which meant a bigger solar array to cover those electricity needs. He and his wife are becoming empty nesters, so they were also downsizing their new home, and they took some of the proceeds from that sale to cover part of the cost of this. And for me, I like the more modular approach that can evolve over time if it needs to and a roof that would last well beyond my lifetime. I only have one EV right now and a more efficient geothermal HVAC system and hot water setup, so my electricity needs are slightly lower. Again, both of us built out our systems to fit our specific needs, and there are dream forever homes. There's a lot of long-term thinking at play here. It's still a little too early to tell how we're both doing on our goal of hitting all of our yearly energy needs from our roofs, because New England in December and January is the worst time of year for energy production, but I'm still producing about half of what I'm using. I'm more than happy with that. It's going to be interesting to see how this looks in the middle of summer. But that raises the biggest question for me. Where are all the Tesla solar roofs? This product was originally announced in August of 2016. We're eight years into its existence, and we're still not seeing it take the solar world by storm. Well, I think there's two things at play here. One, cost. And two, availability. As you already saw, the solar roof isn't cheap at all. It's a premium product, but when it comes to standard solar panels that you can get, there's some great bargains out there, especially with secondhand panels. Now, while my setup isn't cheap either, it would be possible to get that cost down, like way down if you wanted. For instance, I could have saved money with an asphalt roof. I could have gone with a 10 kilowatt system versus a 17.2 kilowatt system. I could have chosen a cheaper panel versus the more expensive ones that I opted for, or even gone with used panels. As for the availability, Tesla is still struggling to get enough experienced installers out there to meet demand. Paul put it best with this. Would you recommend a solar roof to somebody who has interest in one? Yes. The only hesitation there is about the install crews that Tesla is kind of monkeying with the install line. So here in New England, there's not a lot of installers, so I don't know how long your wait time will be. Right. So if you're trying to like 
add an addition to your house and add solar and it has to happen in a certain month, I would say no. But if you're building new and you have some time to work with Tesla, maybe even a multi-month wait and you can handle some flexibility in the schedule, then yeah. I feel like a broken record when I say this, but the decision to get solar on your home is a very personal one. Nobody knows if it's the right fit for you other than you. Knowing what your goals are upfront can really help in figuring that out. That's why I created my Achieve Energy Security with Solar Guide to help people through that process. And even though Paul and I went in very different directions with our solar setups, we're both really happy with the results so far. And before I sign off, I need to circle back to Marquez for a second. In his video, he showed some production numbers that looked wildly high. So high that many people were commenting on that on the video. Well, it turns out that there was a software bug with how Tesla was tracking the numbers. It was doubling the solar production numbers. Paul actually encountered that same bug before Marquez shared his experiences. I reported it to Tesla and I did a little tweet about it showing a video. Here's the prop. It's doubling the values and it's showing as if I produced twice as much solar as I actually did. What was my source of truth? It was the span smart panel, yeah. which is also monitoring. So how did I know? Well, I could record a nice 40 second concise clip for some developer to look at like, okay, this guy has a source of truth. He knows it doubled. All the data is wrong for the last week or two. He reached out to me on Twitter DM and fixed it within days. A month later, Marquez Bradley's video comes out, same problem. I make the <laughs> comment under his video, I report it like, you might want to look at this video. Millions of people already seen it the first 12 hours. He's got the data doubling. He has a similar size roof. Yeah. They fixed his too. And you, you put a little comment under his YouTube video. I like that. That's what you want is some engineer that's working at a company you've put a lot of money into that really cares. Yeah. I love that too. But what do you think? Would you go with the Tesla solar roof like Paul did or go my path with the standard solar panels? Jump in the comments and let me know. I'll see you in the next one.